do you FaceTime with your family at all? No. No, no because I, I mean, I would. I have four kids uh -huh. that I love and adore, and they will never pick up a phone call from me. Forget about FaceTime. They don't pick, do kids talk on the phone anymore? I see young people out here. You Y'all are right. talk? You text, Quinta Brunson, text. I'm like, hey girl, she's like, can you text me? None of them, my kids, I'm telling you what, I could be on fire and my kids would not call to even, they'll, they'll be like this, what's up? What's up, one word. That's it, what's up? Oh no. Yeah. Wow, and then you're a single mom, like what was it like raising your kids? You have four kids. Four kids and most of them are almost all the way grown. Um, you know, it's like being, you know, it's being a single mom is you gotta be tough. You gotta like, I have three boys and a girl. Ooh. My girl was a delight. A lot of people will be like, oh, teen girls, they're a nightmare. Like, I'm so that. sorry. Okay. She was a doll, she still is. She's getting her PhD in psychology. Oh. She's a good girl. <laughs> I'm very lucky. She's real smart, always sweet. The boys are, they're great. I mean, one of them is a musician. He's, uh, he makes a living at it. He's a writer, producer, so that's a blessing. Um, probably moving back home next month, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because he broke up um, with somebody. But the, the twins, the youngest ones, uh -huh. I had to kind of be the father figure to them because right. their dad wasn't as involved. My, my um, older two, the dad is great. He's my first, the one who loves you. Okay. The one I'm trying to fix you up with. But um, <laughs> he's, he's great, he's my best friend. But the younger ones didn't have that, and so I filled in for that. And you know, people think that if you're in a movie or they know you from something, that you're a gazillionaire. Right. Cheryl Lee Ralph and I had a similar situation coming up because they see Sister Act 2 or they see The Parent Trap. Um. They think we're making money every time that airs. It's not like that. We were both struggling single mothers in a very expensive town of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So we've been, I think both of us taken gigs that made us the money we needed to make to support our children. That's the priority. It might not be, is this job gonna get me an Oscar, an Emmy, right. or anything like that? Is, am I gonna put food on the table? And with the boys, I had to be around, because they were in high school, I wasn't gonna be an absent mother. So I had to not take any movies or anything that was gonna take me away. So I was a radio host for three years here in Los Angeles. So I could pick them up from school and make sure they were on the straight and narrow. Well, it worked out for yeah. you. Yeah. A mother is gonna make a way, that yeah. is for sure. My, my audience members knew all about my kids because I talked about them all the time. I called them the twins, I called them the Vikings. I said it was like, because raising them was like raising Vikings, as they would be like, you know, raiding the kitchen and yes. pillaging the villages. That sounds like boys. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's a wreck in everything in their path. So <laughs> they, I still have people saying, oh, how are the Vikings? You know, they on online. But, you know, it was a good job. I liked it. I, I like all of the performing jobs I've yes. done. Yes, and you started out in comedy. Like, yes. So that made you a cool mom, right? Oh. What was that like? No. No? <laughs> Everybody in this audience would think, I wish my mom was Jesse from The Parent Trap. I wish my mom did stand up comedy. It's not, not your like own kid. Because you're never cool. How about your kids? kids? You know, I'm never cool. Exactly right. Mom, don't embarrass me. Exactly right. It's like, why are you trying to be funny? <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. It's like, oh, do you have to stop dancing? Right. Yeah. What age is it that that stops and you're cool again? Or is there an age? I'm still trying to hit that. Uh oh. <laughs> Um, I don't, I think my oldest always thought I was cool. He actually travels with me, like when I go on the road doing stand-up and stuff. He, he was a baby when I started, because I was an actress when I went to New York yeah. to, you know, be an actor, but then I got pregnant and I went, oh, okay. Well, I guess I better get on stage and do stand-up. I had, I had friends that said to me, you need to do it by this date. It mm -hmm. was like the height of the comedy boom. And they held me to it. They said, you need to get up on a stage and do stand-up. And I did it for the first time on the, on the date that we arranged. I was supposed to do three minutes. I had about an hour's worth of material. They wound up letting me go because I was killing for about 12 minutes. So they, they are, yeah, and they are responsible. People don't know in the comedy world, that's like a big deal because they give you this much amount of time. But I was doing really well. And uh, he, was, he was the one I would practice in front of. He was like a year old and I'd walk around and do my act. And so he would grab a spoon and go, I do comedy, ah, and just yell. Oh my goodness, well yeah. he was a good coach and a good listener because yeah. look and at he your thinks I'm now. cool, but the other ones I'm not so sure. Listen, everybody loves Abbott Elementary. Oh. It is beyond a hit. It looks like you guys have so much fun. We do. It's, you know, there's a reason why I think that we are the top 
comedy ensemble on television today. Yes. <laughs> I think so. And, and truly, it's because, uh, as I like to say, there's not a bum in the lot. Everybody in this cast is so incredibly talented. Yes. You know, Tyler, who's been doing this since he was a little kid, and Chris Perfetti, who's an amazing stage actor, and Stan Davis, who plays Mr. Johnson. He's been around forever doing a million roles. Janelle was brand new to television, but obviously she plays Ava Coleman. She's killing it. Yes. And uh, I mean, and Quinta, She's a wonderful actress. She does surprising things. Like she'll switch it up because she can, because she created the show. So right. like if we're if we're doing a scene and she gets an idea, she might change something up real quick and just do it, and it's it, it'll, it'll kill you. She's hilarious, and of course Cheryl, who is an sure. magnificent angel here yes. on earth. Yes, it is so good. Now I hear Quinta like pulls things from y'all everyday lives and put it in the show. Has she done that with you? Yeah, she, she likes to surprise us. We don't know it. <laughs> you know, they had a whole bit about Cheryl m miss messing up people's names, and it came from when she called Orlando. She thought Orlando Bloom was black. And then there was a whole bit on the show about all these people that, in show business that she thought was black, and, uh -huh. and they're not. And, and it wound up on the show, and Cheryl doesn't read the script before our table read. Oh. So she was going through it and then she was like, and then it, it Quinta. <laughs> and Quinta was like. <laughs> that is so funny. What I love is y'all seem like one big old happy family. We, we are, I think we really are. I think it through the camera. I think so too. And people get it. They're like, oh, these are people that actually like each other. You can I tell. don't think there's gonna be a story coming out Sorry to disappoint the tabloids, but there's not going to be like, really, they hated each other. We just, we get along. Yes. We miss each other when we're not working. It shows. It really yes. shows. Thank you. And then, I love this, you, you dedicate your character to your, your late mother? Yeah, my mom it was Sicilian. She passed um, right after we shot the pilot, in fact. And um, she was teaching, she was a public school teacher in downtown D.C. Beautiful. And um, she was a tough lady, but she was really... She was just passionate. Like, if she loved you, that was it. And she felt that way about her students. So a lot of what I put into Melissa Schmenti is an homage to my mom, and um, who didn't get to, she didn't live long enough to see us win awards or um, be a huge success. But after we shot the pilot, when, when she went to the hospital and I knew that she was really sick, mm -hmm. um, I reached out and uh, to my manager who, same team with Quintus' manager and said, can we get a copy of the pilot so um, my mom can see it? And within three minutes, it was on my phone. And you're not supposed to share it, but, right. but Quinta made sure that I had it so I could play it for my mom so I could say, I'm going to be okay. Wow. That's beautiful. And a beautiful way to honor her memory and everything. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.